All right, this is going to be episode 12 in the video series, How to Go from a Complete Noob to a Veteran ASM Coder. All right, in the previous episode, episode 11, we did our first ever thread on intermediate level, and we covered ASM tips and tricks. Now it's time to bump up your skill level, per se, quite a bit. So this is going to be quite a big jump. But next, we're going to be talking about using the exception vector area. So this is going to get to the point in your journey to where you're working on a code, but instead of having uh, just being able to write one ASM to do what you want to do, you might need two ASMs. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take an example. Let's first visit the thread. And let's go to this thread here, a code I made a while, a long time ago. Actually, over a year ago. Remember in the, one of the previous episodes, uh, the debugging and analysis episode, we talked about stars, positional, shared item code. See, that was all able to be accomplished in one ASM because whenever that address got called on by the game or executed, we had a register that always contained our position value. Well, I wanted to make a code that was based on shared item, but not only did it do based on position, whether or not it will execute, uh, it also bases on, is based on the size, how many people were in the race at the time. So it would have to meet two requirements instead of just one to execute the shared item code. If all the requirements or just one of those two requirements are not met, the shared item code will not execute. So how would we do this? Because Let's say you went to the trouble, you debugged the shared item code, and you saw that in no registers um, that there was any value in a register that represented the in race room size. So, okay, you go do some work, you actually found a different static memory address that contains a register that has this in race room size. But by the time you get to the by the time you get from that address to the shared item code address in the game, the, the value in the register that contains the in race room size has been wiped, has been completely gone. So how would you take a value like that and preserve it so you can later use it in your second ASM? Well this is how you would do it, okay? We use an area memory for this. So let's show a visual representation of what we're trying to do. <laughs> yeah, I know you guys like my artwork. Now, let me get some water. So we want these two ASM codes to c communicate with each other but essentially we, we we have a wall here this is impossible because by the time the game goes to here in our in race room size it gets erased like somewhere in this journey so by the time it gets there it never gets there it'll never get to our second ASM code so we're gonna use memory right here the big king of memory we're gonna put values in the memory with one ASM code we'll write it to memory and then our other ASM code the one that's going to decide whether or not it's going to execute the shared item code based on the two requirements we explained earlier uh, it will load the value so we'll use the first ASM for the in race room size store the value to memory and then load it back into a register for a second ASM and then which is the shared item which is the, the modified shared item code and then we'll run the two checks we'll check the in race room size and then we'll check the position and we'll configure the code where if those two checks are met and required, the code will execute. So if you pay attention and you know about static and dynamic memory, we know that this guy right here, you want him static memory. You do, want, you do not want dynamic because things could get erased in portions of dynamic memory that you don't even know about. Things could get moved, partially wiped. Just a bad scenario all around. So in the game, well, Broadway, the way Broadway, the CPU is configured, it has these things called exception vectors. The area of memory, each between each vector unit, if you will, vector unit being a list of instructions to handle a specific crash by the CPU and whatnot, or exception, they ha we have unused areas of memory that don't get used by the game, they never get used by Broadway, and they never get used by the Gecko code handler and in this thread I put those range of memories now obviously get a sip of water this can be problematic because with 
there being over 600 Mario Kart Wii codes ever made, there's going to be some that are going to be using the exception vector area. And some may happen to use the same spot, and those and people using two different codes might not realize that those two ASM codes are using the exact same exact same spots of the exception vector. Therefore, it causes the two codes to not work, and the code user, who may be a noob, doesn't realize this and starts blaming the code creator, saying, hey, your codes suck, they don't work, when that's not the case. Okay, so the, this last three rows of the ranges, they get used quite a bit. Uh, since there's so many codes, you want to use one of these rows of ranges and whatnot. So let's just go over the source, all right? Um, let's get this first source. Okay, so let me put spaces here so we can read that. So let's say you found a static memory address that holds the in-race room size, okay? And for this example, what I found here back in the day that it only gets executed when you pick up a box. So when you pick up a box, uh, this static address will occur before the shared item code address always, right? So this is the default instruction. Compared to 12, obviously this instruction is doing some check for the max in-race room size, but we don't need to be concerned about. All we just know is that for this address, R9 contains the uh, in-race room size. So what I did was, as you can see, I set the upper uh, 16 bits of the address, and all exception vector addressing starts with 8000, and then I stored it to 8016.4f. Obviously, we're, we're just working with a byte, so I only stored a byte. So when you're doing this and you're storing values into this exception vector memory area, only store the amount you need. If, if you're only working with a byte, don't store a word, you know, just in case. Uh, or if you only need to work with a half word, just store the half word, okay? You're, you got a bunch of options here. So obviously 12, the max, which is C and hex, will never exceed a byte. So I just set the address, I then stored the byte. So, at this point, when this code executes, these instructions execute, and then this byte value gets stored, it will be at 8016.4f. Then, other addresses and functions will occur in the game, and let's say we fast forward that a little bit and we get to the shared item code. So now, let's take out this source. Okay, we'll let's go one instruction at a time. Uh, obviously, these are all hashtag comments, but I apologize if they. Uh, let's see if I can short shrink this really quick. Enlarge shrink font control plus minus. Oh, we're not going to worry about it for now. Uh, here's the first instruction. So keep in mind, at this point in time, our byte value is at 8,16.4f of the exception vectors. Uh, it contains the in-race room size. So we gotta do like the same procedure as before for the first instruction. We set the upper 16 bits of the vector. We're using R12. Remember we talked about in the ASM register safety. If you need to use other registers that are not related to like the default instruction, 11 and 12, 99% of the time are good to go. And you don't need to like restore their original values. Okay, so we got R12 set. We then load the byte, all right, from 16.4f, load the byte, and we load into R11. Okay, so we're going to enter that in. Now let's go to this. We're going to run the first check. The first check is we're going to compare it. Now this, this x value is for the user to set. You can set the in-race room size to 7. Will the shared item code only execute when there are 7 people in the race? Or is it 5? Uh, we'll just leave it 5 for now. But this is the check it'll do. If it's not equal to 5, we have a branch instruction. Don't execute. We just named it like, I just named it like that so it's easy to read in the source. Okay? And then we're afterwards, we're not going to go right to the branch. I just want to show you. We do the second check. Remember we talked about in STARS positional shared item code, R25 contains the position. We'll just put the value of 2 like that. doesn't really matter, right? Okay, and then um, branch, if it's not equal to that, we have the first check we did. And if it's not equal to the second check, we branch the same label name. 
Because remember I told you, it doesn't. we need both checks to pass the test. So if one of these are off, the code's not going to execute. So therefore, this is why both of these conditional branches branch to the same label. So keep that in mind when you're doing these conditional branches. You can have two separate conditional branches, or two or more, all go to a final branch label if the conditions are met. Just an FYI. Now, if both conditions are met, the in race room size checks, checks out, the position checks out, it's going to go right down, none of the conditional branches will be taken, and we have this load immediate, which sets the shared item code value. Go one more down, this is don't execute label, it just represents the default instruction that gets executed. So if this code does execute, the requirements are met, the register 3 gets modified beforehand, set load immediate, and then we store it to memory. If one of the two or both of the requirements are not met, this load immediate function gets skipped. We go right to the default instruction. All right, pretty simple. All right, and that's really about it, guys. So just going back to this graphical unit, we're just making two ASM codes communicate with each other, but using static memory as the link, specifically the exception vector area. And that's how it works. All right, and that's pretty much it, guys. Once you understand this, your skill level in ASM coding is going to skyrocket like crazy. Because instead of being limited with one ASM code, you only have so many values that you can look at and so many registers to see what you can do. You can now work with multiple uh, addresses at once. All right, guys, that is it for episode 12. Next episode will be really similar, but it will be about uh, MEM81. Alright guys, uh, thanks for watching.